Our blood is often referred to as the river of life. It serves as a highway for transporting nutrients, oxygen, waste, and other materials through the body. Since the blood carries these different substances, it can give some very good insight into the status of our body. One way that we as healthcare professionals evaluate the body is through different blood tests. There are three main categories for the blood tests that may be done. Physical tests look at the various physical properties of the blood. The blood count tests determine the amounts of the different blood cells. The last category is the chemical blood tests that tell which chemicals are present and the amount of the chemicals. The first of the chemical blood tests is the lipid panel. You will sometimes see this test called the complete cholesterol test or lipid profile. This panel tests the levels of different types of fat in the blood. When you first hear the word fat, you probably think about the fat that you can see on your body that you may sometimes battle to lose. That body fat is called triglycerides. This comes directly from the foods and drinks that we consume. The normal range for triglycerides is anything less than 150 milligrams per deciliter. HDL, or high density lipoprotein, normally referred to as good cholesterol, is also measured in the panel and the normal range is 40 to 50 milligrams per deciliter for males and 50 to 59 milligrams per deciliter for females. The ideal range for HDL is higher than 60 milligrams per deciliter for males and females. Keep in mind that this is a good cholesterol, so more HDL is better. Low density lipoprotein, or LDL, often called the bad cholesterol, should be less than 100 milligrams per deciliter. The last measurement taken is the total cholesterol, or all cholesterol in the blood. The norm for this is less than 200 milligrams per deciliter. Abnormal levels of fat in the blood means patients have a higher risk for heart disease, heart attacks, strokes, and diabetes. Our next chemical blood test is a serum bilirubin test, which determines the amount of bilirubin in the blood. Bilirubin may be a strange term to you, so let's find out what it is. Bilirubin is the yellow colored pigment that is produced and excreted in bile as the liver breaks down old red blood cells. The normal range for total bilirubin is 0.3 to 1.9 milligrams per deciliter. When bilirubin levels increase, this causes the patient to experience jaundice or yellowing of the skin and eyes. The amount of bilirubin may be high due to liver problems such as hepatitis and cirrhosis of the liver. A really high bilirubin reading may mean the patient has problems such as stones basic metabolic panel is a test that checks the levels of seven different chemicals in the blood. Let's look at each of the chemicals and their normal ranges in the blood. BUN, B-U-N, stands for blood urea nitrogen. This part of the basic metabolic panel checks the amount of urea, a nitrogen waste product, in the bloodstream. The normal range is anywhere from 7 to 20 milligrams per deciliter. When the levels are below normal, this could mean that the patient eats a low protein diet, has liver failure, or is suffering from malnutrition. If the levels are higher than normal, it could mean the patient is dehydrated, in shock, or has GI tract bleeding, kidney failure, or congestive heart failure. The next chemical tested during a basic metabolic panel is carbon dioxide, or CO2. You probably learned at some point in time that carbon dioxide is the waste product of respiration that is carried on the surface of red blood cells. The level of carbon dioxide in the blood should fall between 20 to 30 millimoles per liter. A patient with carbon dioxide below this level could be experiencing ketoacidosis, metabolic acidosis, lactic acidosis, diarrhea, or kidney disease. Carbon dioxide above normal levels could indicate that a person is experiencing vomiting, breathing disorders, or an excessive release of the hormone aldosterone. Creatinine is another chemical tested in the basic metabolic panel. This chemical is a waste product created when your muscles contract. The level we expect to see in the blood is 0.6 to 1.1 milligrams per deciliter for females 
and 0.7 to 1.3 milligrams per deciliter for males. That makes sense considering males usually have more muscle than females. Abnormal results usually indicate problems with either the kidneys or the muscles. This is because the muscles create the chemical and the kidneys get rid of it. If the levels are low, then the person likely has muscle problems. If the levels are high, then they may have kidney problems or something could be blocking the urinary tract and preventing the kidneys from clearing creatinine from the blood. The blood glucose levels are also checked in this test. You are likely more familiar with the term blood sugar rather than blood glucose. These are the same thing. We get glucose from the foods we eat and it is the energy source for the cells in our body. How much we consume and how much our cells use should be in balance. The acceptable range for blood glucose is 70 to 100 milligrams per deciliter if the test is a fasting blood glucose and 64 to 124 milligrams per deciliter if the test is a random blood glucose. You, like most people, probably already know that blood sugar levels are related to diabetes mellitus. If the level is slightly higher, this could mean a patient is pre-diabetic. If it is significantly higher, then the patient is diabetic. High blood glucose or hyperglycemia could also indicate problems in the pancreas such as pancreatitis or pancreatic cancer. Hypoglycemia or low blood glucose could mean the patient has kidney or liver disease, tumors in the pancreas, sluggish thyroid, or a decrease in release of pituitary gland hormones. During a metabolic panel, there are some electrolytes tested as well. Electrolytes are chemical ions that carry an electrical charge. They are found in the serum portion of blood, which is the are minerals that are present in our blood and body tissues. Electrolytes are important for maintaining fluid and pH balance in the body, nerve and muscle functioning. What is serum electrolytes test? Serum electrolyte test is a group of tests that commonly measures the levels of sodium, potassium, chloride. Why is serum electrolyte test done? As a part of preventive health checkup, to evaluate the cause of kidney diseases, heart diseases like irregular heartbeats or arrhythmias, muscular weakness, to monitor the condition of patients on diuretic therapy, intravenous fluids, or dialysis, to monitor the hospitalized and seriously ill patients.